We have one last speaker today, Dr. Damon Noto. He's a spokesperson for Doctors Against for Forced Organ Harvesting. We are the group that put this on for you today. Uh, Dr. Noto is a graduate from Mount Sinai Medical School, completed residency in New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia. He has spoken to various media, radio, TVs, many forums around the country about the issue of forced organ harvesting as well as ongoing human rights in China. Dr. Noto will give an introduction and speak a little about what DAFOH is, how it was formed, and what we do. Uh, thank you, Dana. I'm not going to try and repeat a lot of the information that was given today by our panelists. They did an amazing job. But I do think it's important to know a little bit about our organization, Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, and to put a little bit of perspective on things. I think it's very important. Um, Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting started in 2006, and since the beginning, our focus has been on China. And I think it's important to understand why we chose China and why that's such a major issue and why we've chosen to educate both the public and physicians around the world about this here. Well, I'm going to repeat a lot of the things that were stated here by our panelists. One of the most simple reasons is China is the only country in the world that allows the practice of forced organ harvesting from prisoners to exist. There is no other country. China is also the fastest growing transplant country in the world. It transplants the most amount of organs, except besides the United States, in the world. They're number two. And according to China's official statistics, more than a million people in China need organ transplantation every year. China continues to also be a major center for transplant tourism, even though they've tried to put this to an end. China has also officially failed at formally introducing a public organ donation program. And as mentioned by our panelists before, even the Red Cross one-year pilot failed miserably. One major reason that a panelist rec had already recognized why it's so difficult is it's actually very taboo for Chinese people to be buried without all their organs in place. In fact, one of the things that they tried to implement in China, like we have here in the United States, is that if on their driver's license they check something that says that you can take their organs, that they would be uh, available as an organ donor. However, in China it was quickly passed around that this is actually be a curse. And many people believed in China that if they checked that, it was an actual curse. You can see the difficulties it is for a formal organ public donation program to actually exist. China also continues to admit that the vast majority of the organs used for transplant comes from executed prisoners. As our previous panelists said, this is fact. This is not something we're making up. This is coming from China themselves. Even their vice minister of health is saying this. China is also the only place in the world that offers patients in need of organs the opportunity to obtain an organ within the time frame of weeks, not months, not years. Even in the United States, we recognize ourselves as probably one of the countries on the forefront of transplant, transplant medicine. However, even in the United States, it's months to years of a waiting list even for kidneys. But in China, they often boast that it can take weeks. According to China's numbers, approximately 10,000 organs are transplanted each year in China. Now, those are numbers from the Chinese Ministry of Health. It's hard to actually know if those numbers are correct or not, but that's their numbers, not ours. China also executes more prisoners per year than all other countries around the world combined, and it's not even close. Not only does it execute prisoners of major crimes, such as murder and rape, but they also execute prisoners of minor offenses and also prisoners of conscience, such as what Erping Zhang had stated before, the largest group of prisoners of conscience today in China is the Falun Gong practitioners. It's very hard for us here in America when we think of executing criminals, we might think of we have murderers, you know, we have rapists. Even in the news recently, the one uh, prisoner who's causing a lot in the news about wanting to donate his organs, this was a man who not only killed his wife, but also drowned his children. 
So in our minds, when we think of prisoners, we think of these type of people. It's in stark contrast in China, where you have prisoners of consciousness who've done nothing more than simply meditating or fighting for freedoms or democracy, and their lives are taken for organs. It's really important to put this in perspective. Also, the number of executions each year is closely guarded state secret. It's not like they're telling us each year how many people they're executing. Our best guess comes probably from Amnesty International, which estimates the number around 5,000 per year. The problem is, if the number is really 5,000 a year, and China is, execu I mean, China is transplanting 10,000 organs a year, well, where is the difference in organs being made up? Why are these numbers not coming together? Even if all the executed prisoners were used, there still wouldn't be enough organs. Besides that, you have the issue of blood and tissue matching. And if we're a random patient population, we all know it would be impossible for all these 5,000 to be exactly matched to 5,000 people who need organs. You also have the time needed for procurement and the time needed for transplant. Everything would have to be perfect. You know, time is of the essence. So the question is, if we assume that 10,000 people were executed, is it possible that the number 10,000 would equal the number of 10,000 people who get organs? How would that be possible? How could these numbers match up? The only possible way is if there's a living pool of donors that is systematically organized and ready to, ready to be harvested. Now, many in America might think that's absolutely impossible. How could that exist in today's age? But we have to actually look at the facts. The facts are, in China, the majority of organ transplants in China occur in military hospitals, and that a large portion of the military's hospitals' profits comes from organ transplantation. Also, the majority of donors comes from China's prison system. We all know the Chinese Communist Party plays an integral role in both the military hospitals, the military itself, and China's prison system. So is it possible they don't know that this is taking place? Is it possible that they are just letting it happen, or is it possible they're actually participating in it? Now, if you ask you know, Chinese experts, they would tell you that the Communist Party is famous for controlling every level of society from the top down. And it's, there's actually a saying in China that every street in China has one Communist Party member who oversees everything. So if the Chinese play this level of control on society, is it possible they really don't know something like this is taking place? I want to state very clearly that Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, we have no issue in picking on China. We have no issue on picking on the Chinese plant, transplant community. In fact, we both openly invite Chinese officials and Chinese doctors to take place and part in our panels, take part in our events. We've asked repeatedly for open dialogue with both Chinese officials and China's, China themselves. And we've also asked repeatedly to visit China to investigate the situation ourselves. Even David Mattis on our, our panel here has also asked to visit China. However, none of these requests have been answered. In fact, we often use Chinese officials' numbers, their own statistics when we give out numbers. We never use our own. We always try and use their official statements. So there's no agenda for us trying to pick on China. What we're trying to do is encourage the international community to look at this situation, look at it rationally, and to act responsibly. We're asking China to make all organ donation transparent, traceable, and open to scrutiny, as David Bannis has said before. These are things demanded by the World Health Organization, not demanded by us. We also ask all pharmaceutical companies and research to be stopped in China at this point until they can prove that they're able to do this. We're asking all people in the transplant community to get involved, to know more, to let people know more. I really think that one day in the future, when this ends, the family, the friends of people who were whose lives were taken for organs, they're going to ask the transplant community, the international trans community, what did we do? What did we try and do to stop this? I hope we can put an end to this horrible practice, and I hope more people can get involved. Thank you.